Blockbuster is so hot right now. Hindu spots in the history of World Wide Web and what exactly killed Blockbuster, the nation's most popular video store of the 1990s. Since the creation and spread of the internet, information has been more and more available than ever. Considering literacy and the access information have been the closely guarded secrets, the closest guarded secrets of the highest classes of society by way of religious rights and political control, profound information, information that changes your life. It is Web 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. .0. Web 1.0 is read-only, flash player stuff. Web 2.0 is reading, writing, blogs, sharing, sites, videos, podcasts. Web 3.0 interactive data hub, ability to decentralize, create interoperable profiles, integrative games, education, and virtual worlds. Ah, to surf the wave, the world wide web. So tell me again, how did Blockbuster get busted? Hasa Fila put together this succinct Twitter thread of Blockbuster's implosion. Find him on Twitter and give him a follow and like for it. And hey, if you like this video and want to see more, give me a follow and a like on YouTube and Twitter. Thanks. After rereading Tazafila's Twitter thread back from February, I wanted to run down what actually killed Blockbuster shares. Besides not buying Netflix for 50 million in 2000. Besides not buying Netflix for 50 million in 2000. According to Tazafila, our story begins 1987. Summer Redstone, a billionaire investor and owner of 20th Century, Columbia, Orion, Paramount, and Viacom. You know, those 70s to 80s movies with unicorns and cool opening shots that disappeared? Redstone coined, content is king, valuing it over distribution. Seeing Viacom as leader with MTV, Showtime, Nickelodeon, kids are the future. 1987. Red led $3.4 billion takeover with junk bonds, says Tasafila. Red wanted it all, which means he's got to get Paramount, who is competing with QVC. Now enter Bed Blockbuster. Massive market cap, loads of cash assets, aging but proven, says Tasafila. Blockbuster sees Viacom as a great partner to expand into TV. Yay! Viacom does a stock swap merger valued with Blockbuster at $8.4 billion. This is during the big Paramount bidding war with QVC. Major money move, upping bed Blockbuster value plus sweetening the deal with another $1.5 billion. Cool. QVC loses, Blockbuster accepts step out. Movies on TV are cornered by Viacom having snatched Paramount. Can't lose. Introducing new CEO, John Antioco. Expanding for years and years, Tessafila goes on to say, by 1997 studios were undercutting blockbuster rental prices by straight to DVD sales. Blockbusters losing to Walmart. And then in 2000, Blockbuster built video on demand with Enron. Right. Perfect timing for Netflix to offer an olive branch when Blockbuster thinks they're on top of the world with Enron and Viacom having their back. But did they? Less than a year later, the deal with Enron's video on demand service went under in 2004. And Viacom was hungry. 2004, Summer Redstone. Big Red forced Blockbuster into an 81% share buyback, paying $905 million dividend and foisting $1.45 billion onto Blockbuster via a reversal of that stock swap merger. Paramount followed by a pair of mutinies. Whoa, that was 100 squats. <laughs> We're at 200. Hey, now at $5 a share, Blockbuster has an unpayable debt. Seems to be a theme and is perfect for hedge funds to buy up, which according to Tasafila by 2005 is exactly what was done. Enter Carl Icahn. According to Tasafila, Carl Icahn took out a $3 billion loan in 2004 and started Icahn Partners, his very first hedge fund. Icahn claims to have shorted 2.5 million shares of a company already in bankruptcy in late 2004 and lost the bet. 
today. Icons fund is net short 52% and net long 8%. Little fact. If ever there ever a thing there was an anti-activist, I bet he was. But what I'll say, I'm not pursuing any sort of intent towards him. He is a deactivist. Not to be confused with the one and only war on icon, Ryan Cohen. By day. 2005. Carl buys to 10 million shares of Blockbuster on his way to the board of directors. According, according to Tassafila, Carl opposed online growth, suggested books, even worse, porn, encouraged higher late fees. CEO Antioco pushed for online, while Icon pushed Antioco out. Icon back insider Jim Key stands as CEO, hikes Blockbuster online prices, cuts marketing, and even tried to grab Circuit City on the way down. What a death spiral. Tassafila reminds us, in 2008, Netflix and Hulu entered streaming with one million users. Video on demand, clearly people's choice. Blockbuster refuses to change, as we all may remember how stupid not to adapt to Web 2.0. September 23rd, 2010, Blockbuster filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Unable to pay its $1 billion in debt. This didn't just happen to Blockbuster. Tassafila goes on to connect Sears, Toys R Us, Payless, Radio Shack, GameStop, Players, Aeropostle, Sports Authority. Oh man, the truly awesome thing I remind myself is that GameStop is no longer on the verge of bankruptcy. Oh. For those that aren't already, buckle up. And for those that are, keep all hands and feet inside the ride at all times. And join me for the great Yama Hindu Squat Challenge. Thanks for tuning. Like, subscribe, and get to the YouTube algorithm. Let's pump this energy through the mycelium. Nice and close the loophole that is the Ponzi scheme shell game of the Wall Street stock market. Can't stop, won't stop, game stop, where the Wall Street game stops. Credit to Tassafila for putting this Twitter thread together. But check out Blockbuster.com. It was updated August 18th. Probably nothing. Or it could be a decentralized autonomous organization attempting to bring decentralization through the blockchain using the most nostalgic token of the 1990s. Power to the players.